Hello everyone! I hope you're all having a great Saturday, and as it is Saturday, I know you're all busy with your hobbies and activities, so I thought I'd surprise you with a wonderful chess puzzle. Now, the first time I saw this puzzle was uh, probably some 10 years ago, but uh, I also saw it a couple of days ago again. Uh, I saw it on David Lada's Facebook page, and uh, probably a lot of you don't know who David Lada is, but a lot of you have seen his work. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to introduce the guy to you. Uh, in his early days, uh, he was an active chess player. Later, he became a chess journalist. His work has been published uh, in most of the world's uh, renowned chess magazines. And today, he is known uh, as a renowned chess photographer. Uh, very often, you will see uh, a photo on the cover of a chess magazine that was taken by him. So, do check out his work. I will put uh, a couple of uh, links in the description below following, uh, leading to his social media and his uh, website. And uh, if you really enjoy his work, you can even acquire this uh, book he just made. Uh, it's called The Thinkers. This is the book. And uh, it features 193 high-quality photos uh, of chess players all around the world. It's a great book to have for when your fr family comes over, for when your friends come over. Uh, even if your girlfriend comes over, you can just uh, show her, let's say, I'm just gonna grab one here. Uh, you can show her a nice photo. Uh, of Vasily Ivanchuk here, here you can see it, and uh, this is a this is a full color photo, but there are also some black and white photos. Uh, there are even uh, photos uh, spreading uh, over two pages, so it's uh, quite quite a lovely item to have. And uh, I mean, it's a lovely item to have if you enjoy chess. But even if you don't enjoy chess, uh, not if if you don't enjoy chess, but if you have a family member or or some friends that uh, don't really follow chess. Uh, it's a great way to introduce them to chess, that uh, these are actual people who are playing chess and, uh, I don't know, probably someone who doesn't follow chess, they just think uh, those are some no-name people sitting uh, across the board and uh, making moves and that, that's really boring. Uh, but this way, every photo has been taken like in, in the exact uh, moment that was right, uh, then you can really see how 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 wonderful uh, the chess world really is so that's what i wanted to, to tell you and the reason why i'm kind of promoting this is because he also promotes chess he also promotes chess on a global scale uh, he promotes chess uh, on a daily basis and uh, well it seemed reasonable since uh, this channel i run here it's basically a channel to promote chess so it seems seems reasonable uh, to promote someone el else who also promotes chess and another reason is I use a lot of his photos for my thumbnails. So if, if you don't follow the photography, you've seen his work uh, on my thumbnails when you click on my videos. So that's, uh, that's the thing I wanted to say. Uh, hope I introduced him to you and uh, I do hope you check out his work. Uh, the links are in the description below. So let's check out this puzzle. Uh, what's, what's this all about? Uh, this is a puzzle composed by Genrich Kasparian. He's an international master from Armenia and um, he got his national master, master title in 1936. In 1950 he got his international master title. And this is a puzzle he composed in 1935. So he composed it even before becoming a national master. And uh, not only was he a composer, today he is considered to be a, one of the greatest composers of uh, chess endgame studies. Uh, but uh, in his younger days he was a very active chess player. Uh, he won the Armenia Chess Championship 10 times. Uh, twice he tied for first place uh, with future world champion Tigran Vartanovich Petrosian. So a great chess composer and, and an excellent player, obviously. So this is the puzzle I wanted to show you. And... Uh, don't uh, don't just uh, watch the solution. Uh, I will give you a hint. Uh, it's white to win and white has to checkmate black in seven moves. So white to mate in seven. And uh, don't just uh, I mean pause it. Of course, try to solve it. It's not it's not an easy puzzle. It will take you uh, even if you're a great chess player. It will take you probably some ten minutes. So don't don't uh, feel forced to solve it immediately. Uh, you can even just uh, pause it and leave it somewhere in the browser or make a print screen and uh, maybe try and solve it when you have time uh, because you'll really enjoy, uh, you know, you'll really feel good about yourself if you, if you solve it. So uh, I will give you some time to pause the video now and uh, like I said, d don't just watch the solution, try to solve it. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to solve it, congratulations. It's, it's uh, probably one of my top five puzzles I've seen uh, in my life. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see the solution. Uh, first move for white is definitely knight to e8. And knight to e8 is with the idea uh, of knight to g7 check followed by bishop to f5 or bishop to f5 followed by knight to g7 check uh, depending on what black plays uh not not the not uh, the most precise way would be knight to f5 if you play knight to f5 uh, then black immediately escapes with king to g4 and now he has an escape route so knight to e8 is the first move and now black has a couple of options here uh you can of course catch on uh, capture on f4 you can capture on h4 uh, you can capture on f4, let's say, with the rook, uh, you can push f5, you can push g4, so a lot of options here. So let's explore some of them. Uh, if you capture, for example, g captures on f4, uh, now you get knight to g7 check, king goes to g6, and now comes a bishop to f5, and this is checkmate. So this is not the solution we're looking for. Uh, for those of you who are new to chess or maybe new to solving chess puzzles, uh, when I say it's checkmate in seven moves, that means it's checkmate in seven moves if black plays the most correct moves. So if black defends properly. So uh, after this knight to e8 move, uh, obviously capturing on f4 doesn't work. Capturing on h4 doesn't work just as well. Uh, even if you capture with the rook, it's the same idea. Knight g7 check, king goes to g6, and now comes h5 check. Uh, rook captures on h5, now bishop to f5 check rook captures and now g4 uh, if you found this solution this is uh, this is also acceptable but uh, this is a checkmate in uh, six moves it's not in seven because black didn't play uh, the most precise moves so after this knight to ea move we have another move uh, let's try g4 if g4 is played doesn't really matter again knight g7 check king g6 and bishop to f5 checkmate uh, there is a little difference if uh, black tries the move f5 now you have to capture with the bishop on f5 first, uh, because if you go knight to g7 check first, then king can escape through g4. So first you have to capture it, bishop captures, uh, now you play g captures on h4, and uh, now comes knight to g7, and this is checkmate. So none of these moves uh, are, are very good for black. Uh, after knight to e8, the solution you have to find is king to g6. This is black's strongest defense and uh, this is where the fun starts uh, here you have to play h5 the h5 comes with a very very subtle idea uh, one way to blunder this position would be to push f5 because after f5 and rook captures on f5 uh, now you can't really push h5 because king can capture on h5 and after bishop captures uh, now yes you are threatening knight to g7 checkmate but black can push g4 and he makes an escape route for himself on g5 so uh, after this king to g6 move uh, the correct uh, move order is actually h5 check uh, forcing the rook to capture if you capture by the king if king captures then simply again knight to g7 check uh, king has to go to g6 as bishop is covering the g4 square and again bishop to f5 check so uh, the king can't capture the pawn rook has to capture it rook captures uh, and now comes f5 and now the rook is forced to capture as the bishop is guarding f5 rook captures and uh, again a beautiful move uh, if you really solved this then <laughs> i'm sure you felt extremely good when you found this move uh, pawn to g4 and what's the idea of pawn to g4 uh, well black can't move any of his pawns and he can't move the king so only thing he can do is move this rook or this rook Problem is, if you move this rook, for example, rook to h1, then comes uh, bishop captures on f5, and this is checkmate. So your only other option is to move this rook. So let's say rook to rook to e5, and uh, now comes again a beautiful move, bishop to f5 check. And this comes with the idea that you again want to force the rook to capture on f5, and now the king again doesn't really have anywhere to go, and now comes the most beautiful move of the puzzle, uh, knight to g7 and uh, this is this is amazing uh, as you can see the pawn on g4 is attacking both rooks here and the knight on g7 is also attacking both rooks uh, but more importantly the knight is also guarding the f5 square and the dh5 square so here it doesn't really matter what black does if black moves this rook then pawn captures rook on f5 will be checkmate 
uh, if black moves the f5 rook then pawn captures on h5 will be checkmate as like i said the knight covers the f5 square and the h5 square so let's say rook to h1 simply pawn captures on f5 this is checkmate uh, let's say the other rook moves rook f1 then pawn captures on h5 and this is again checkmate so there were a lot of variations here and uh, you really i'm sure it took you some time to <laughs> to figure out all of this out but uh, let's see it one more time uh, from the beginning so uh checkmate in seven uh for white it's a forced variation with if black defends properly knight to e8 now king has to go to g6 we said this is the best defense now first h5 check rook captures if king captures then it's made in two now comes f5 the rook is forced to capture rook captures and now comes g4 uh, we already said that if the h rook moves uh, pawn captures uh, bishop captures on f5 is checkmate so the other rook has to move and now again comes bishop to f5 check forcing the rook to capture rook captures and now knight to g7 and uh, this is one this is one beautiful structure this is i mean this uh, uh, armenian guy genrich kasparian is uh, was really something uh, rook to h1 and pawn captures on f5 this is checkmate and this is the solution to the puzzle uh, once again i truly congratulate everyone who managed to solve this puzzle as it's uh, definitely not easy and uh, you know it's it is a forced variation but uh, definitely not an easy one like uh, extremely extremely tough uh, puzzle so yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as it's Saturday, I haven't uh, posted a puzzle in quite a while, so, so I thought I'd surprise you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Antonio Mrakujic, uh, Luke Vaikus, Bradley Campbell, uh, Ignatius Fernandez, and uh, George Fafart for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with another great classic.